Hello, my name is James. I'm with City Utilities Inspection Department. And uh, today, I'd like to explain to you how it is we're going to install a junction cabinet. This is going to be a single phase that we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to try to go through the proper installation procedures, some measurements, and the expectations of what it is that I need to see when I show up on your job site. So what we have here, I'm going to use my pointing stick here. Uh, this is a junction cabinet sleeve. Whenever you pick this up at our yard, it's going to come in four sections. It's going to be in a cardboard box. It does come with bolts, and you just put this thing together. It's a simple little sleeve that goes inside the ground, and what it does is it covers up our pipe and utility uh, wire that's going to be coming up through here. So this right here will also bolt to the junction cabinet. Whenever we're finished, this junction cabinet will be installed. This sleeve needs to be four inches from ground level. So if I stick a level across the side of that, you would see that this sleeve is properly installed at four inches above ground. The uh, conduit inside is two inches on this particular junction cabinet, and we have another one going back out to the east over here. So there's three pieces of uh, pipe in here. They're uh, radiuses, they're 24 inch steel radiuses, and they are connected to a five foot piece of steel galvanized. On the end of that steel galvanized is what we call a two inch FA fitting, which is an adapter, female adapter, that goes from galvanized threaded to PVC two inch. And then it continues to move on through PVC as, as it goes to the next uh, junction cabinet or transformer area. Your ditch depth on this area here, I always ask people to try to dig a 50 inch ditch. If everything is 50 inch ditches, 50 inches to this point right here, whenever everything is backfilled properly to our specs, everything is going to come out just right as far as measurements. We only require to have 36 inches of cover over the two inch conduit or the uh, four inch conduit, whatever, over the primary cable, whatever it is that you may be installing, 36 inches of cover over the primary is all that we absolutely have to have. But when we come to junction cabinets, riser installations, or uh, transformer locations, those sweeps have to go a little bit deeper to accommodate for how much wire that gets pulled up inside these junction cabinets, transformer areas, and then risers going up the pole. Okay, so now what I'm going to show you is this junction cabinet location and where it is he properly installed there. So what we have inside of here is we've got three 24-inch steel radiuses, or L's, that are going down on the ground. We've got one headed this way, one headed that way, and then one coming back out to serve this direction over here for a transformer. And on each side of these 24-inch L's is a five-foot stick of galvanized pipe. And what we've got placed inside here right now is he's brought them all in, backfilled, compacted with gravel, and our sleeve is sitting on top of the gravel, leveled out. The sleeve is four inches above ground, as I've showed you over here. So now we're going to take a look what's inside of this sleeve. That ground rod that I talked about earlier is sitting here and it's got some space between it and the rest of the pipes inside. We like to have that separation so we have plenty of room to be able to place our wires as they come through. So now we're measuring the uh, location of these sweeps as they come inside the junction cabinet. And what I'm looking for is 18 inches of separation from the top of a bell fitting to the top of the sleeve. And currently what we see here is 17 and a half inches, which is okay because what he has on here is actually FA fittings, but he's only put those on there to be able to protect the pipe as he backfilled with gravel. So they're taped off and it's protecting anything that's going to be coming down inside the pipe. So the finished product, he will have these FAs taken off and we're going to be installing these two inch bell fittings. So let's talk about this here real quick for just a second. This is a two inch bell fitting. Um, they seem to be a hard thing to find around Springfield, I'm not sure why. Um, but every, one of the, every primary location that comes up out of the ground needs to have one of these on as finished. And the reason for it, you'll see this rounded edge right here. We, we pulled in a plastic coated or rubber coated style of uh, primary cable. And if there's any rough edges, on, even on the plastic, it cuts that coating away. So this is to protect the wire as it's going in. So we got to have these on every location of prime rates being installed. So the contractor will actually take off these FA fittings and install this on top. And once he does that, he'll have the proper 18 inches that we have to have to the top of the sleeve. 
So now we've come to the point where you've given me a call and it's time for me to show up and look over the entire finished product and so you can get the final inspection. Throughout the process of this video, what you've been able to see is us kind of putting things together in a construction outfit as we're measuring, as we're kind of explaining through the video. But this is the process in which I show up now or someone like me shows up to be able to give the final inspection of this particular single phase junction cabinet. On your prints, it's gonna say a JC-1. So now what I'm looking for is, like I say, the, the inside of the cabinet. We've already established that our bells have been installed properly. We're looking for the measurement now. And what we see is to this top edge is what we're looking for is 18 inches. Because this is where I measure from, not here, but here. This is the 18 inches that I'm looking for. This is the sleeve. So the sleeve also at ground level will be installed at four inches. So our ground will be to this point right here. The contractor hasn't had the ability to backfill yet, but I know that I can see the ground around us. So we're gonna be at four inches deep. Our ground rod's been properly installed. We have bell fittings now on each and every one of these, and they are string already inside of these sweeps. So I know that when our crews come, they can just grab a hold of that string, tie their rope or their pulling cable to that, and pull that in and be able to effectively get our, get our primary cable installed. So <clears throat> now, this is nice and level, it's clean, it's bolted in solid, and that's all the contractor has to do on this particular job is just finish backfilling, and I'm gonna sign off on it. We'll get the crews out and get power to it as soon as possible. So if you have any questions, please give us a call at 417-863-9000. You can follow the prompts and you can be able to get through over to the line department and talk with any one of our line supervisors or possibly even someone in engineering. If you, if you look at your print, you're also going to see up there a contract line inspection. There's a phone number there you can also contact. It will usually give you a line directly to me or someone that is carrying the phone that does this job. So I hope this video has helped you and have an awesome day. And remember, always be safe.